call this meeting to order. We begin this meeting by acknowledging that we are on the land that is being inhabited by Anishinaabeg nations. We'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Saginaw and Anishinaabeg. We would like to give thanks for sharing this land. Whereas there was a former council president at 9 6 p.m., we have resolved this regular meeting the open business at the Nassau District Community Center and Arena, and at the minutes of the regular meeting of July 13, 2022, and the special meetings of July the 21st and July 25th, 2022, we have Hold a public meeting pursuant to section 34 of the Planning Act to consider proposed zoning bylaw amendments. Be resolved that council meeting is now adjourned for the purpose of a public meeting. Move our seconder. Dale and uh, Timber on here. Advisor to the method by which the notice of the meeting was given and the dates that the notice was given. Uh, the notice of this public meeting was advertised on July 5th, 2022 in the roundabouts and was circulated to the various subscribed agency, uh, agencies and landowners within 120 meters. We have resolved in pursuit of section 34 of the Planning Act, the public meeting is now officially open for the purpose of hearing comments regarding proposed amendments to the zoning bylaws as follows. File number ZBA 22-03 for the property in Salter Township, section 13, parcel 27908, part 1, land 53R 10041, located at 361 Birch Lake Road. File number ZBA 22-04 to permit temporary habitation in the recreation vehicle on a lot with primary residential use and on a vacant lot within your resource recreation and rural zones. Amendment supplies throughout the entire township. Can I move on a second? Are there any persons present who wish to make oral or written submissions to the proposed bylaw? Please give your name and address and bylaw file number to the clerk. And we're dealing with first uh, So the first application um, uh, is ZBA 2203, as applied for by uh, Stacey Patnode and Melanie and Eric Martin, is to provide for the seasonal dwelling. Um, in addition to a main use dwelling. So there's already uh, a residence. The zoning bylaw does not permit a seasonal as a second resident uh, on a residence on a property. <clears throat> so this uh, would allow that second residence. The type of building that they are proposing to place is a seasonal dwelling. It's a park model trailer. So we couldn't, they couldn't um, use the permitted uses of a secondary dwelling on the lot, so this is why this application has to be um, uh, processed. I did receive one um, letter of comment, and um, I can read it out if, if uh, council wants to hear it. It's this, this correspondence is regarding the proposed zoning bylaw amendment for the above property. My concern with the amendment application is that if this is approved, it will set a precedent for the others following this too resulting in the township being tax, uh, losing tax dollars. I'm all in favor of development. It is done, if it is done in a manner that is beneficial to increasing the tax rate to help support services and education, fire, OPP, health uh, clinic, to name a few. It is my understanding that the property is comprised of several acres, 50 plus, along with hundreds of feet frontage on Birch Lake Road. I would hope that council would deny this application, put forward the suggestion that it <coughs> Determined number of acres be legally surveyed and deeded, thus taxed separately. 
this approach, I would imagine, would better benefit the township and its taxpayers. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter. I hope that council will consider my concern and make a decision that is a benefit to the township and its taxpayers. So just one comment on the um, tax implications. So this will be an assessed building if it's approved. So there will be an additional tax dollars um, seen from that. Is everybody able to hear that? No, no. 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 That's why I'm moved up. So if you want to, if there's no comments, we can move to the next. She, she has a, a good comment here in regards that she can separate the Severed the land there because the land you know, the one that doesn't work. Would you should be forced uh, people there to sever, sever their land there? That's a good question. The tax value, if it was severed, is compared to the tax value that the township would collect by having a second part home is not going to be the same. Uh, I'm that's addressing more, his concern or yeah. their concern. I would, I would, uh, the assessment law, the, or an assessor would have to determine that. I, I couldn't say because they take a certain amount of the, you know, whatever acreage and residence, yes. It's, it sounds like it would, but I couldn't answer that, honestly. But the second building would be assessed. A second building is assessed in for tax. sure. Yes. Okay. So it's always too. <clears throat> My understanding is that it's a temporary uh, building, that, it, that it's a, a house trailer that will be moved within a certain amount of time and that it's not permanent. So to do a, to split their property just isn't uh, you know, of any but value. This, uh, for what yeah. they want to do wouldn't make sense. No, it wouldn't. The not. cost. Right. Because you have to take that into consideration, a consent, you're looking at the application fee to the municipality, the cost of a survey, which would be required, um, the transfer, the land titles, fees, the, a lawyer fee. So it would um, be quite expensive to do if you're only looking at a temporary uh, solution to a, to a housing problem. No, because once we once we put into this, then they can that allows them to apply for that building permit to put this on on the property. Um, if they choose to renovate or change the use into a year round, they have to go through the building permit process. They wouldn't necessarily have to go through this again because a second dwelling is permitted within our zone. So this at least takes care of that temporary use that they're going to to have there. It's place housing you. And there's nowhere where we require them to say temporary to get a time? No. I, don't say I, don't, I mean, I'm sure they, they you could, but then that's ends up hard to enforce. That's not their intent, according to this. It says, you know, to provide housing to individuals who cannot access housing due to the current housing market and lack of inventory. Well, that gives me the impression that that's not going to change any kind of strength. So, so you want me to tell you what's going on? I know that made the application. Yeah. Do you want to come to the podium? Yeah. The microphone is on. I don't know if it will help or not. But, uh. So what's happening is that we are, we made excuse the application. Just your name? Eric Martin. Thank you. We, we made this application so we could, uh, we right now are, kind of homeless because we sold our property up in in uh, in, in Sudbury and we uh, have this friend that we are trying to help out like we're we're helping out each other type of thing and then we are are lo still looking for a property and we were thinking maybe ar around this area later to, to buy but right now we, we we can't find anything or, or when it comes to uh, renting and um, 
like uh, uh, housing and uh, uh, stuff like that. It's it, it, it's for for us. We, we we are having a hard time to to find a, a spot to to live. So what we are wanting to do is 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 the the trailer that we are putting on, on this property will will uh, be like a uh, s some kind of uh, maybe like a, a bunkhouse or, or if you want to put it that way so we get so we don't have to live with the owners of that that property so we have our little area but we're we're kind of helping them at the same uh, at the same time as like it's a help each other type of thing so but as soon as 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 we find our, uh, another property that's suitable and that that we can move our, our our stuff to or whatever that's what we we uh, we'd like to to do so but We've heard of, of uh, a lot of, of people just uh, 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 bringing like uh, trailers and all that, and then so that's why we are, are, are asking like per permission to uh, uh, to do this. I don't know if it uh, clarifies uh, what, what you were saying, but it's it's we're we're not planning on on staying here. You know what I mean? That that's why we can't really uh, determine wh when we're gonna find a property, or uh, like we might find a property tomorrow. But we're like planning to to stay to help out for now, and then whenever we're we're done helping or whatever, or we find a property, uh, we'll we'll probably uh, uh, be out of there. So Eric, the mobile home that is part of this would be moved to the new property. Probably, yeah. Excuse me if I could ask you a question. What happens if November and December rolls around and you haven't found a place? Then we we go and and we either go back to living with the the owners or or try to find uh, 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 Yeah uh, uh, Okay. This is is my and Melanie uh, and his wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of understood that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it would be for the season. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's a few issues, but this is what we were trying to do: is set this up as a seasonal. So if we're there a little bit longer, at least for certain months out of the year, we have our own space, and then over the winter months, uh, <coughs> or the winter months for now, is when we have our home. And that's where we're going to live for so the winter months. This is more your stopgap solution because there's nothing here to rock a hard place, sold your home, no place to move to. Yeah. You have a plan, you have another place to go to for the winter months. And it's kind of a beneficial thing because she helps us, and then over the summer uh, with childcare and stuff too, we can give them a hand with uh, kids and whatever else. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this is sort of crossing the line what we're trying to do with our games. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a house trip. So That's right. It's more than it's not a travel trip. It is a, an actual... I mean, if there was no residence there, they could easily move this in and apply for early permit because it's permitted in the rural zone. So yeah. those are permitted. But it's just the fact that our zoning doesn't allow it as an accessory that they have to go through. Yeah, I'd like we talk to the uh, Ministry of Health as far as the septic and the water and all that. That's their business. Yes. This is our business. Yeah, a, like a building yeah. permit will be approved or post um, issued until they satisfy the requirements they have. Yeah, yeah it's very, it was very good to explain that at the mic. You know, the one thing there was that they marked it down as, as uh, residential. But I don't see a big issue with that part in your application. That's all I got. Okay. Second one. Second one. Uh, Sarah to jump in. You want to take this one? 
Sarah is from the JL Ventures area. So I'll just before you start, I will say that I've received three submissions. Um, I can quickly go through them if you'd like, but um, they are in general, they have concerns with allowing navigational trailers. Um, the one, I'll just uh, jump to. tonight. My name is Sarah Vero and I'm a registered professional planner and uh, associate and senior planner at JL Richards in Sudbury. I work with townships and municipalities across northeastern Ontario on land use planning matters and happy to be here tonight with council. 
So just wanted to briefly kind of say why we do land use planning regulation. Um, just at a very broad sense, it's to protect matters of public health and safety, to protect natural resources and the environment, natural heritage, and to avoid land use compatibility issues. Um, and then kind of more specifically related to recreational vehicles, why we want to look at regulatory mechanisms for recreational vehicles is, again, protecting public health and safety and protecting the natural environment. So in specific, when we're looking at recreational vehicles, looking at how are services going to be addressed with those recreational vehicles, um, dealing with potable water, gray water, black water, solid waste disposal, and obviously around matters of um, wastewater, protecting potentially source drinking water uh, nearby to those properties, as well as our recreational waterways. So that's why we're looking at um, some potential amendments to the town zoning bylaw, and then as well looking at a future licensing bylaw to regulate that use. Um, we've been given the direction by council from early, earlier council meeting this year to look at the potential for permitting ha temporary habitation in recreational vehicles in the rural zone and the resource recreation zone on vacant lots, excuse me, within those zones. So look at how that could be done within the township. Um, what we did initially was take a look at the township's um, planning mechanism, so the official plan and zoning bylaw, and I believe that memorandum was presented at the last council meeting, so where we had taken a look and decided an official plan amendment would not be needed to pursue such use, but that amendments would be needed to the township's zoning bylaw to be able to allow temporary habitation in recreational vehicles outside of a campground. So right now, the way the zoning bylaw is set up, temporary habitation can only occur in a campground. The zoning bylaw also permits um, storage of recreational vehicles, but only on lots within a residential zone. So as a result of that, what we've done, based on the direction to look at the possibility of permitting temporary habitation, we've brought forward a draft zoning bylaw amendment um, which indicates how the bylaw would need to be amended to allow for temporary habitation in the rural and resource recreational zones, um, and as well temporary habitation on a lot within a residential zone, which has a primary uh, residential use. So in those cases, we're thinking potentially someone has a relative passing through on a weekend or a week, they would be able to temporarily habitate in an RV on a lot where someone has a house and then uh, to respond to the request from council to look into the temporary habitation on vacant lots that those permissions have been put uh, into the draft text that you see in front of you. So there are uh, changes to section 4.26.4 which is in the general provision section um, and within that, it specifies um, the number of recreational vehicles that would be permitted. Um, let me just pull it up in front of me here. The size of the lot, so on lots greater than one hectare in the resource recreation and rural zones, um, complying with setbacks for accessory uses, when on a lot with a primary use, or complying with the general setbacks on a vacant lot and then proper servicing must be addressed. And as well, we've noted compliance with a licensing bylaw. The licensing uh, bylaw would be the next step in the process. We haven't drafted that yet. We wanted to um, have this stage tonight, which looks at the potential permissions for the use. And then um, going forward from that, we'd recommend drafting of a licensing bylaw, which is really going to get into all of the details about dealing with the servicing, um, again, the source of potable water, how people are dealing with their gray water, their black water, the appropriate permits and approvals are all taken uh, into account. That way we can be assured that at the end of the day, if there is this type of use happening, it's happening appropriately and with respect for the environment and the neighbors around it. Um, 
So I think that's all I had to say right now. We are we do have a public meeting tonight. I see there's a lot of people. So I think I'll step away and maybe just um, reiterate uh, Ms. Whalen when someone comes up to the microphone to just state your name and state your comments and we'll kind of take take all of the comments. Um, and then we can maybe respond if there are some questions at the end, but prefer to kind of have it have it flow in order of the comments. Um, and then we can go from there. What we will do is consider the comments as well as the written ones that are received. Um, we'll be discussing them with the township and we'll come back at a later date uh, for council to make a decision, I believe. Sarah, have you dealt with any municipalities in regards to this bylaw? Yes. Um, so most recently we've uh, done amendments in the town of Espanola to allow this temporary habitation on a vacant lot that was a change to their bylaw last fall to permit this. Um, we also uh, prepared a licensing bylaw for them. This will be the first year that that is in effect. Um, and I believe it's just kind of a handful of um, lots and landowners that are taking this up so far. So. And, and you need to um, we are working with uh, municipalities on the Manitoulin for updating their zoning bylaws. So with each of them, we're kind of um, dealing with the recreational vehicles, each one of them individually and how they want to um, handle it. But I will say recreational vehicles is the hot button topic in the use planning over the past few years, that's for sure. And all municipalities um, really across Northeastern Ontario, I would say are dealing with this. We're looking at it in zoning. Um, as well as looking at it in licensing. Several municipalities have enacted licensing bylaws over the past number of years to deal with the use. Thank you. So I'll step away from the podium. Okay. Is there anybody from the audience here who's a commenter? I just I just have a, a question and it's in regards to uh, the yeah, number of oh pardon me I'm Claudette Bolden and um, my question is uh, uh, as per the ratio um, of the number of trailers that will be allowed on these vacant lots I, I, she kind of mentioned that that there would be something but didn't specify um, is it put by acreage or uh, you know, what is the, uh, the allowable uh, number of trails on, on one particular vacant lot? Like, has that been looked at at all? That's going to be for us to decide. Okay. Okay, so that's still not in the... Okay. It's still outstanding at this point. Thank you. Hey there, it's Lyle Latterout, 6A Powell Drive. I'm just wondering, you keep saying it's, it's a temporary. How long is temporary? Mm -hmm. And um, why are you doing a blanket amendment to this? It should be on a lot by lot basis. Uh, if somebody wants to park something there, they come to the Committee of Minor Variants, whatever, they discuss it, they go over. But to put a blanket uh, amendment on that it's going to open it up to such a can of worms you're never going to get control of that and you can put bylaws and rules and regulation but we all know that there's it's a mess out there and it will be worse if this is allowed and and it, it it's not it's not a good thing for for any township whatsoever anyway okay well, that's why we're asking for comments out in the public here, because this is why right. we have the problem. If you drive around the municipality, there's a hundred plus trailers out there right now. There is. So we'd like to get some kind of a handle on it. Well, but by opening the, the opening it and, and just saying, okay, it's free for all now, everybody can park it, that's even worse. I mean, you should try and go after the ones that are parked illegally. You have bylaw enforcement officers, what are they doing? You know, I don't. I don't know. 
Well, that's why we're having a public meeting here tonight to get the comments yes. there for us there to decide what Well, I'm, I'm definitely in, not in favor of it. If, if that helps, I don't know. But uh, it's, uh, you're opening a can of worms you will never control. Good enough. Thank you. Cheryl Powell from 60 Powell Drive. Um, recreational vehicles, I'm all for them. You have a lovely park over here, shoots. Is, is it always full? Mm -hmm. is, you know, if so, maybe that's the way to go because when you have a recreational vehicle, um, the facilities are there, your sewage is cared for, it's all in an area that you can police and, and enforce. You let people go um, to lots, they may be a hectare big, so that means it's going to be a very large area to police and enforce. That's on your dollar, <coughs> that's on my tax dollar. I'm not sure that that is a good use of my tax dollars. Maybe the way to go is to, uh, if you want to encourage more recreational vehicles, more parks. Because remember, the federal government also chips into federal parks sponsorship. So uh, if there is a gigantic need, then there are other avenues. I, I think that this is one that has far too many questions and not enough answers at this point. So I'm not, a, I'm not in favor of it. Until I can make sure that um, sewage is cared for, water is taken care of, and that there is going to be some kind of uh, system to enforce the rules that you make. Because remember, a rule is no good if it can't be enforced. And if you don't have the money to enforce it, then it ain't a good rule. We do have trailer parks in the municipality right now, and they're run well there. Waterfalls are a prime example. Blue Heron's another one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, full fall. I, I, I'm all in favor of those kinds of parks. But this, this uh, amendment, is it says vacant lots. It says uh, not parks. It says vacant lots. So there's a lot of back land that qualify as vacant lots. So that's my concern. Thank you. Yeah. Just in in with in respect with what in respect with this uh, gal just said, and I understand that concern. But the thing is, what you are saying is all this will be addressed about the sewage, the black water, and you know, and it's going to be addressed and saying that it's opening a can of worms. Well, this is already a can of worms of people out there because they're putting their trailers on the lots not knowing that there was even a bylaw that existed saying they couldn't. Mm -hmm. So they're already out there. So this is going to make it better because you're going to find out where they are and they're going to say, okay, you need to do this, this, and this you know, to protect our environment. Okay, the trailer parks that are mentioned, they're packed. They're packed. Did you ever go out to Cutler Lake Lodge and see what's happening out there? It's not pretty. You know, I, 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 I don't want my grandchildren, you know, if that's what they can only do, fine. And do you see the prices of those? There's lots of vacant lands, and of which I know people in the area that we go. It's private property. Okay, it's owned by people. They're not going to disrespect the land that they purchased. And they purchased it for that reason. Not everybody can afford to put a camp up with the full thing. Okay, and maybe there's a plan in the future to do so. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of us in the uh, low income, okay, that would like to take our children and grandchildren to the lakes and not a crowded park. And if we had the ability to buy that property, you know, we love it, we respect it, we bring the kids there, we bring their friends there, and they're not in this crowded, jammed in pickle uh, environment, you know? And, and, uh, so, and they're taught to respect the land, they're taught to love uh, what's out there and learn how to camp, how to set a fire, how to swim, 
you know, and all these things. You know, you stick them all in a drill, but well, holy moly, you know, it's you know, it's not that it's bad to do that. But when there's other options available to some people, why are we shutting it down? You know, like it's it's uh, it just doesn't make sense that someone who has a piece of private property cannot use it for recreation. They own it, they're gonna respect it, and you are gonna bring in uh, rules of how it needs to be followed and you're talking about registering your you know some kind of licensing that's going to bring it into control it's out of control now the can of worms is already out there this is going to uh, start to at least address it and find solutions and we need to find solutions like our environment's in trouble and you know they, the the uh, the population is growing. And to start opening up all these provincial parks, you know, how many people want a provincial park in their backyard, like, you know, with all these? Anyways, uh, that's just my opinion. And uh, like I say, I respect all the other opinions. It's just, uh, I think it's, uh, you have to be there uh, to understand the little guy who can't afford these mansions on a hill. Oh, and they have rights also. Thank you. Everybody needs to understand that this is a draft. None of this is written in stone. It's, it's a guideline should we choose to move ahead with making some kind of allowance, but could also choose to remain with the status quo. And so, you know, don't assume that this is going to fly. It's a draft. We're going to talk about it. The more feedback we can get from everybody, the better. But nothing here is written in stone. It's a guideline. <laughs> If I could just have a follow-up question. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, and I respect the fact that you would take care of the land. However, you also said that it's, it's, it's a mess out there already, and yet we have rules. What we don't have is enforcement of these rules. Why? Because it's expensive? Because it's time-consuming? Because it's difficult to police? So I respect you. You said you would take care of the land. But I've also seen messes. And I've seen people who don't respect the land. And I've seen people who put trailers out in the bush and start fires, which threatens my property. That's happened. And so as much as I would like to just say, sure, vacant land, people own it. You're not going to let somebody um, who doesn't respect the property on that land, well, there's, as you said, I'm quoting you, a mess out there. And so if we can't enforce what we already have, what's it going to be like when we say that you can put temporary vehicles on vacant lots, period? That's an exponential growth in policing and enforcement. That mess already exists in the urban areas also. Yes. Not just rural. No, no, I totally so agree. So it's not just the private vacant lots. No, I totally and so agree. so that's a totally different issue. No, what I'm saying is if we aren't taking care of what we've got, are we going to be able to take care of what we might have? I'm just asking a question. Any other comments, anybody? Thank you. So I'll just respond to a couple of the comments that were made for some clarification. Um, with respect to the number of trailers on a lot in the draft um, that we had prepared, I believe we just had put one, one trailer on a vacant lot. 
um, and that the minimum size of the lot needed to be one hectare. So if you had less than a hectare on a lot in a rural or resource recreational zone, then you would need to come forward for an amendment um, in those circumstances, so that's the draft. Um, with respect to the time period, um, that would be outlined in the licensing bylaw. Um, we could put it in the zoning bylaw, but I think the licensing is the more appropriate location for that. And I would say typically, I mean, this is a seasonal use, so typically you're looking kind of around May long weekend or perhaps April to approximately Thanksgiving, November. So that's kind of the general time frame typically that we would see um, temporary habitation being permitted. Um, and then finally, um, with respect to the comments, so I know there's been a number of comments saying that um, this might not be an appropriate use of the lands, um, and there's certainly some good arguments around that, that um, generally we would like to see those permanent types of structures, camps, or dwellings, um, but understanding that sometimes that is not the most affordable option. So this is an option we were given uh, the direction kind of from council to explore that and that's why the draft has been written this way. Um, with respect on kind of whichever way council goes though, I would like to maybe reiterate um, or encourage the township to look into the licensing bylaw, um, even if you don't pursue the changes to the zoning bylaw. Um, based on the comments that were received tonight about um, potential messes of current situations with trailers, the licensing bylaw could still address that. So unlike zoning where if you had a use and at one point in time it was legal um, and then a change is made to the bylaw and that use is then grandfathered, with the licensing bylaw, if that comes into effect, it applies to everything on a go forward basis, whether that trailer or use was there since day one, or I'm going to um, put that use on tomorrow. So the licensing bylaw is still a good option for the municipality to be able to get a handle perhaps um, on those situations where maybe there's some issues occurring with the trailers. And the licensing bylaw is done under the Municipal Act um, it has a lot easier mechanisms for fines to be issued if those bylaws are not followed as well. So I would just encourage that. There will be a lot more details in that licensing bylaw, some more meat. Um, and as was mentioned by some of the comments, it really is sometimes a matter of enforcement. So once the bylaws are put in place, then the enforcement needs to be done in order to follow up on that. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry, Lyle Latterud again. Um, can you tell me, has there been an application to make the amendment, to, to amend the bylaw, zoning bylaw? Or is this just up in the air? This is what this public meeting is to get the input there to go forward. Yeah, but you have an consu outside consultant hired to figure out whether it's worth it or not. Somebody somewhere has come up with this idea to put an amendment on a zoning bylaw to allow this, it's somebody has generated this. Like, where did it come from? So we had some complaints and some concerns of people with travel trailers on lots right. without a main use. So according to the official plan, that's not permitted. So it kind of spurred a whole review of our zoning and official plan and how we can address these people that are doing that, having that use on their okay. land, which does not comply. So the discussion came up that well maybe a licensing bylaw for people to put travel trailers, but we needed a uh, consultant to really look at our, our bylaws and how they're worded to see how that fits. So when when Sarah did her review, uh, she found that our official plan set has everything it needs to, but our zoning really only permits uh, tr a travel trailer in a campground to stay. Right. So if we want to license, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we need to fix the zoning so that we can do the licensing properly. So we can properly do the licensing bylaw because right now zoning says you can't have a travel trailer on a vacant lot. That's what it says right now. Yeah. So if we want to license them, then really the two should match. The, the zoning should say they're permitted, but 
you have to get a license. And then the licensing bylaw will spell out exactly what you have to do to get that license. It doesn't mean just because we changed this, now everybody can go put a trailer in the lot. They still have to go through the licensing. When we pass the licensing bylaw, they'll have to follow very specific criteria to do that. Okay, what about the trailers that are out there now then? Is, are they grandfathered in, they're covered, or they, no. they have then would have to come in and, and try and license it? Or yes, the necessary to set. So with the licensing bylaw, it's, it's the authority is under the Municipal Act rather than the Planning Act. The zoning is under the Planning Act, and they have all uh, public consultation. Every time you amend your zoning, you have to have public engagement. Mm -hmm. So under the Municipal Act, though, if the council passes a bylaw under that authority, it's not open for appeal by anyone. So they say this is what you have to do, then that's what you have to do. And then it, there's mechanisms for enforcement and fines, which are a lot easier to do than under the um, Planning Act and the zoning and, and uh, having people comply with zoning. And, and that would be policed by the zoning bylaw? By our bylaw enforcement officer. And yes. I understand and, there's uh, three of them? Is, and our, we have, so we could be our building inspector, most likely, yeah. and our bylaw enforcement officer. Okay. Which would be the ones that would capture these instances that would come back and, you know, we could address those people and get them on board. Because I got to tell you, where, where I live, uh, um, not very far, up on Camp 50 Bay, Camp 50 Road, there was a squat there of six to eight trailers, just a total mess, and one blew up and burnt for some reason, nobody knows, and um, they've cleaned it up considerably because uh, I believe the property is up for sale. Then there was another one at uh, 210 uh, Agnew Lake Road, that has since been cleaned up, but those people literally just squatted and and there, there's no respect i'm sorry but there was no respect for any law or any land that place was a bloody mess and a hazard it was part of the ground. Pardon, pardon me i said maybe it's ground well it, no it was terrible okay. anyway but okay i guess we're probably going ahead with it the way it sounds um and it just for sure it's going to be policed. Well, I mean, I was hoping so. <laughs> that's, the, yeah. that's our duty, is to yeah. police the, the bylaw, or police, no. or enforce the bylaws that uh, council enacts. Yeah. That's our job as, as staff, and, and that is to adhere to those and, and to get people uh, in compliance. Okay, I'm definitely not in favor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, anybody? Uh, Tim Bell. Um, I'd just like to say I'm opposed to this, too. I, I just, you're opening up a can of worms. Everybody said what they want to say, but I just want to say I'm opposed to this. Thank you. I'm sorry, I haven't read the full agenda wasn't aware of the meeting tonight. My name is Robert Stanky. I live at 24 Young Street in Webwood. I know all about these trailers. Vacant lots or occupied lots. Not all the trailers are bad. What you're proposing today, licenses and that, sounds to me like a tax grab. Legal or illegal. Uh, you can pass all the laws you want. Bylaws used to be laws, but the most important word in the English language is the word why. Why is the trailer there? Who owns it? Why is it there? There could be good reasons, there could be rotten reasons. Perhaps. It blew up because of a legal meth lab or something? I didn't say it. I did. <laughs> That's good you said it. <coughs> Policing. I, I have lived in Webwood for about three years. I'm going to make t-shirts up that say, I survived Webwood. <laughs> I, I've had a trailer stolen. 
got it back to the OPP. It took me about months to get my trailer back. The word why is it there? Well, in Wadwood, we have lots of police cars. We have police cars going up and down the street all the time. Marked, unmarked, ghost cars. I have a collection of OPP cards. Last three years, it's one of my collections, OPP cards. I, I get to know all the officers. I pity the officers because they can't do their job because of this or that or the other reason. The big reason is that the citizens who are witnessing a problem, whether it be a trailer or whatever, don't give the police the evidence they need to make a collection, a conviction and let the officers do their job. And then the officers do the job, take the, the criminal to court, court wraps them on the right and they're back out in their trailers or whatever or whatever they do. So fundamentally, I guess it's our fault if there's a problem with a trailer on an unoccupied lot. The citizen has to do their job and help the police enforce laws, any laws, bylaws, criminal laws, corporate laws, it's the citizens that have to eventually get the job done. You can pass all the laws you want. The OPP in Webwood cannot do their job because the people there, they might call 911, but when the officer comes for the 911, whether it's somebody has a, some criminal has a vicious dog and gets bit and ruins clothing, they won't testify. So Robert, getting back to the trailers, are you for the trailers on vacant lots or you Depends on why the trailer is there and how it looks. It's the big question, why? Why is it there? People have to use common sense. I don't want, there's the right wing and the left wing. And this kind of legislation you're proposing about licensing for everything is a cash grab against the citizen. Some citizens have lots of money. Do you have lots of money? Some money? Are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. Good. There are some people that are financially comfortable. There are a lot of people who are financially very uncomfortable. Why make it difficult for them? Some houses are really just trailers. They're just side-by-side -side temporary homes. Eh? And some people are lucky just to have a trailer like that. Any place in the township. I don't like laws that are useless and it's up to the people themselves if there's a problem so the council should if they have bylaw officers and OPP officers dog catchers and that make sure they're the ones that do the job but the citizen must help them get them off their ass and do the job I don't like taxes. I'm ta taxed to death. I've paid more taxes in my life than who? Of you. You pay your taxes. Okay, Robert, any other comment here? I'm against too much laws. There, when it comes to trailers, there, I think uh, lots of people have a concern. It's not the trailer; it's the two uh, tarp buildings there they bring with the trailer, and uh, the four wheelers there, and the pontoon boat, and all the other debris there. 
Is that what you're finding in other municipalities or other areas there? Um, so that's definitely another uh, comment and another part that we can regulate through the licensing. <laughs> I'm really kind of, kind of pushing off a lot of the details yeah. to the licensing bylaw, but that is an opportunity to say if you want to allow an accessory structure like a shed on a lot with an RV, or if you just want to allow the RV, if you want to allow additional recreational vehicles such as the, the four-wheelers and the boat, mm -hmm. um, or just the RV. So I would suggest that that as well we can regulate through the, through the licensing bylaw. And maybe just a comment too about, I think the genesis of where this is coming from is people wanting to use a vacant lot. Um, they have the means to have an RV, um, but maybe not necessarily the means to have a camp, like a, a structure um, to have a permanent uh, location for a camp. And so I think that's the reason that we're seeing the RVs being used a lot more uh, frequently. Um, and again, trying to regulate it through the two-pronged approach of zoning where you want to potentially permit the use, and then the licensing, how we, how we lay things out appropriately on the lot and how we make sure that concerns of health and safety and protection of the environment are covered. Any other comment you want to get? Yeah, I just, uh, some points here about the enforcement. The enforcement may be an issue, but people need to make a report for the bylaw officer to be out there to enforce those rules. Uh, this new bylaw will give the bylaw officer a tool to use to enforce the bylaw. If you don't have the bylaw, they can't go out and enforce it. So when you get a bylaw for them, they have a tool to go out and use. Uh, like Councillor uh, Kevin mentioned, it, it's a draft, it's in its building stages. Um, if there's a vacant lot out there um, that someone wants to build a home or a cottage on, you can, if we have a bylaw out there, this may allow the trailer on that vacant lot one, two, three years, um, and it can be licensed with a fee until that building is complete, and then then they're paying taxes on a building or a cottage. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say those points. It's it's in its building stages. We're not there yet. We have help building it for us. She knows what's happening in other townships. Uh, I just have uh, questions for Sarah. Uh, we do have uh, some some uh, questions in, in, in writing there about the taxes, about the garbage, and about homeowners putting the bill for our garbage um, people and all the other expenses, policing and that. What's your comments on that? Could potentially be additional in the 
through the licensing to try and account for that if they are getting garbage pickup service, which I think would be the only physical service. Um, aside from noting, obviously, the additional strains on things like police or, or just by law enforcement and all those other things. So the licensing fee is supposed to try and kind of capture those additional demands on municipal resources. Um, so we can look at that fee and what we think those demands would be with the township as well as we move forward in the process. Like when you say there's no garbage pickup, they may not have garbage pickup. They still going to have garbage, and somewhere along the line, it's going to go down our garbage chute. That's and right, right. So they would be taking it to the to the municipal landfill, and obviously there would be work expended on that for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to use an example to like the other ones that you've heard. No, I just can't. Hear. Oh, you can't. Like the other municipalities that have used your license, like have used your, your uh, services. Like I'm just thinking, for example, like down my sister's road, there was a trailer and it was not lovely. And they used our like they put out the garbage and they put out like they used the services and it wasn't until like it finally let somebody a citizen report and it got processed. But it's because of zoning, it's slower. In the other places. It, with the licensing, did it kind of give more teeth to the bylaw enforcement so that anybody that would have been, you know, maybe sent in a call earlier, it would have given the bylaw enforcement agent more teeth to go out and be like, uh-uh, instead of, because I know the zoning one is like, okay, you have 14 days, you have 28 days, you have 90 days, and it can be such a long process that by then it's November and it's like, hey, see ya, anyways. Like, it didn't give a lot more, like, like strength to the bylaw enforcement officer to, to go out and be like, like you said, police and enforce it. Because as it is now, because it's under zoning, it can be a very slow, arduous process. So even without changing the zoning by adding the licensing, it gave some better power to the enforcement officers, just the, the ones that you've already helped um, to do this. Did they find an improvement overall? Because they were all having, from what sounds like, the same issues, and that they already had their can of worms open in 2017. So if they've been working on it for a bit, have you gotten feedback from those municipalities that they have somewhat benefited, at least in some areas, and then the licensing covered the costs of the pickup? Like, did they? have recommendations of, oh, we put the license at this amount, but we need to read. And are they able to easily review that to change the license amount to capture enough funds for the extra garbage, the extra recycling, the extra, 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 that I'm not saying everybody's trailer would create, but I know like down my sister's road, a handful <laughs> off the top, you know, could create. Did they just give you any feedback on that for them? So I've only done the licensing file for Espanola, but through that process had reviewed um, over 10, maybe 12, 15 municipalities um, licensing bylaws. Um, Espanola's is just in effect this year. So this is the first year, um, but certainly what you're speaking to, that is the goal, that the licensing bylaw allows for easier enforcement and greater teeth. Um, because right within a licensing bylaw or a bylaw under the Municipal Act, you have the ability to put the fines right in it, like a set fine schedule. So for example, um, I believe I have some here, but it's like use not permitted by this bylaw. So if you have maybe someone is having a trailer on a lot that's in a different zone, so not what we're talking about today, you could go and say that's a $300 fine or that's a $500 or whatever it is, here's your fine right here right now. Um, and then through the bylaw as well, it's gonna say you, know, you have too many accessory uses or your location is not permitted or you're not connected to what you said you were going to for your, um, for your wastewater or you're not doing what you said you were going to for your garbage disposal. And all of those things would be set out in the licensing in terms of how are you going to address each of those matters. So that is definitely the goal that the licensing is an easier tool for bylaw to use. Um, I can certainly, prior to coming back to council, I can reach out to um, bylaw enforcement in as 
Spinola. Do you the same yes. person here? Okay, so <laughs> um, that's Richard, right? Yes. yes. So I can talk to Richard or um, and get a sense from him on if, if there's an indemnity enforcement issues, because like I said, this is the first year, and we were anticipating um, Sometimes there's a perception that these things are going to be, if we permit it, everyone's going to pop up trailers everywhere because now we've allowed it. But the reality is, I think, a handful of people will will take this up. Or, you know, we'll, we'll have a few this year, a few next year. It'll be kind of um, a slow rolling thing. But And I think we kind of have that perception because the areas that we know about it are the problem ones. And we kind of think, this is going to be a big deal. But the reality is maybe there's only a handful of people that want to do this and hopefully we'll do it properly with the right um, licensing. This bylaw officer mentioned, then the Espinola was mentioned, uh, Richard was mentioned. How many bylaw officers operate in the township? One, this Richard. Richard, where does he live? Espinola. The Richard I know lives just out of Sudbury in the zone. I've met him. I dealt with him at 18 Young Street in Webber. He lives in the Zilda. He's a French horn player. He plays with the No Strings Attached band in Sudbury. He, and he's the bylaw enforcement officer for the township. Doesn't make sense to me. Because Richard, basically in Sudbury, wouldn't have an idea of why of that and why of that. He's just got a piece of paper to go by. Doesn't make sense to me. Does Richard have any other jobs other than bylaw officer? No. No? Not animal control? No, as a part of bylaw. Right. So if there's a vicious dog at 44 Young Street in Webwood, a Richard would not have a clue about that dog even if that dog attacks an old lady, and the old lady, of course, doesn't want to talk to Richard because she doesn't want to cause trouble. Okay. There okay. is Richard okay. Okay. in okay. a cell. We're getting off topic, Robert. That's the topic. Okay. The bylaw officer is the topic. No. That, that, that's the end result. Any other comments, anybody? Hang on, listen. Tim, I think offense that you say we don't pay taxes on our acre property. I pay as much taxes as most people would for houses. Yes. So why is that offensive? Like why are you saying we're not paying our taxes? No. How did I say we're not paying our taxes? Because they can also not paying our share of taxes. You said. Bob, you want to come to the mic there, please? Yeah. No. Uh, well, then I. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. If that's okay. What well, you, I'm just asking. Yeah. No. What, what I was saying was, in in the letter, uh, he was talking about um, by putting a trailer on a vacant lot. Yes. The township is losing money through taxes. And I was well, saying with this bylaw, hang on, with this bylaw, that maybe way, the way, where it goes, it's in a draft right now, where it goes, um, it might be saying that we want a bylaw so that someone can put a trailer on a vacant lot. Yes. Legally. Yes. Like pay a fee. Pay a fee. Pay a fee. Why a fee? And pay a fee because he's going to be building a home or a cottage through the proper channels with the building permit and to address that concern the taxes eventually will be what if your building comes we'll see where the bylaw goes well, i mean that's where i'm at right yeah i haven't trained a lot of us for 15 years yeah clean lot clean lot yeah it's going to be worth 200 damage yeah Very <laughs> so bobby yeah. What happens if your trailer catches on fire? Burns. I go put it up. You can't the fire is fire to property. What? Fire park. Okay. That's that's you another one. Okay. Yeah. What, what if what if there's what if somebody attacks? But still, I'm paying eleven hundred dollars a year taxes. 
Yeah, but that's because you got a lot of property. No, no. That's vacant land, isn't it? Vacant land. Three acres. Mm -hmm. I still have tax bills there. I mean, if you're in Bush, it's a different price. Well, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I mean, you're talking waterfront. You're talking all of River Road. That's what you're saying. All Star Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, as vacant land, it's not taxed to provide for these services. I can take my trailer off the lot and say I'm taking the rest of the bike. What yeah. difference does it make? Don't make no difference. But that's what we're getting at. When you put a trailer on vacant land, you need police services, you need fire services. Really? Maybe you don't think so, but when we go to the river road and, and there's five or six trailers parked on one Well, property, that's the issue, right? That's what we've been fighting about. Well, time. that's what started it all. Yes. Yeah. You know one what? Trailer you know what? Everybody was touched. putting trailers wherever they wanted in this township for 20 years now. Yeah. And, and, and maybe we didn't have the resources to police it, but this has brought it all to the end. So, so we've got to make a decision either way. I'm not convinced this is a good idea, and I'm not convinced it's a bad idea. I'm still well, me either, convinced. but I'm saying you should be allowed one trail on your big and top for no reason. Well, what do you no, zone that's down not there, Bobby? Hey? What do you Rural. zone down Rural. at Pardon? Rural. Rural? Yeah. No fee is not going to happen. Why? It's, it's, we're either going to we're either going to make some kind of rule that grandfather what's there, have the license and maybe cut it off, or we're gonna or we're gonna make a provision so to open it up, but, but it's not gonna be the status quo. Well, I don't see what the problem is. The status quo well, you keep it clean. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, that's the problem. We got stuff in in communities is a mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rurals not that. So you're you're covered in the rural anyway in this. No, I'm not covered, Cheryl, because I still got paid a fee. Zone. Yeah, but I still got paid a fee. Well, not so far. <laughs> not well, yet, not so but far. the next bylaw will be. If it gets, well, that's that's another part of it, though. Yeah, I know that, but that's what's coming. I mean, well, you can see it right no. on the wall, and it's coming. No. It's every, every other township has the same thing. That's when you and I are going to be back here. So <laughs> no. <laughs> well, like I said, I don't mind if I was paying big taxes already. Uh, I mean, that's right. As you said, it's, yeah. we're not the only township. Yeah. It's all over now. It's, well, yeah, uh, I mean, I've, I've read lots of bylaws. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. 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 I, I know. Many I know many different you know. townships. So, uh, Bobby, to put a septic system in, what is a rough figure for a septic system? It depends on what you're on. Anywhere from 15 to 25. So, a, a travel trailer, nobody's going to spend that kind of money on a travel trailer. You know, <laughs> yeah, as a travel trailer, you don't need them. The car the Ministry of Health, you have to have a privy. Or you have to have a contract with a supply pumper, or put a septic system. But as as a building code, you can't do that because under the building code, under the municipal act, it says that you've got to have a licensed septic system, which you got, which Ontario Health doesn't provide. But it is in the, in the building guidelines. So, I mean, there's, there's so many. I, I deal with it every week. Yeah. So, Holding tanks, they will not. They will not allow. So, I mean, that's one of the things that are. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Any other comment, anybody? Yeah, in the township, uh, 193 acres to build a home. That's still the same thing? You couldn't build on a one acre lot or. One time when I bought my place, like Highlands there, he had to keep his three acres. Remember last year you were going to get me that piece on my side of the road at that time? And yes. Okay, uh, so when you're talking about people are going to put a trailer and then eventually they're going to build in a couple of years, what if they're on a one acre lot? They're not going to build because they can't legally. So what are you going to do? Throw them off? Uh, I'll, I'll I just, just wonder where that's going. I'll just clarify you. Uh, any lot of record, as long as you can meet the setbacks of the zone, you can build on. So even if it's not three acres? That's right. Okay. So the, for consent to sever, the minimum lot size is one hectare, so about two and a half acres. That's if you're creating a new lot. That's the minimum uh, size in the rural uh, and resource recreation zones. So when you're going to have people with trailers out there that are on one or one and a half acres, 
and they're not intending to build because they know they legally can't. So what are you going to do with those? You can't throw them off their own property, really? Can you? I don't know. Just wondering. I, I got enough property. I'm just looking out for these other guys. You need three acres or whatever it is. We'll send the bylaw officer. We'll send the bylaw officer. Are you willing to respond to that? So in the draft that's that we had prepared, and the minimum lot area was the one hectare. So. Uh, to be able to put a, a recreational vehicle in the rural zone. So it was a minimum lot area of one hectare um, to be able to do it. But we're talking about existing lots already. We're not yeah. creating lots to, no, no. to put a trailer on. Right. These are existing lots. So the lot's there regardless of whatever. Yeah. And you have to meet the setbacks that are yeah. already established within the zones. Yeah. So how far from the lot line, how far from the water, uh, would have to meet our current zone. Robert? Grandfathered in. Lot, lot size and use of lot. I'm not sure about Massey. But Webwood was surveyed as per lot size and number in 1891. So who owns what? How big is it? What's the zoning? Do you want to resurvey the whole township to make sure this is exactly what you're talking about? No, the lot size in Redwood and Mass is totally different there than the, the country there. Right, all I know is that Webwood was surveyed in 1891 during the era of Mr. Webb. Any other comment, anybody? Nice to hear some comments from the other people in the audience. Appreciate any input or comments you have. It'd certainly help us steer our way. Are you talking to me? No, uh, I know one gentleman almost got up there. And I appreciate. Uh, <laughs> we can sure hear him. Let me speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's your turn. Go for it. Anything else, Sam? Okay. No, so I don't have any other commentary. So thank you again for the public for um, providing your comments tonight. So I will go over this um, as well as the written comments that have been received by, by the township. So we'll review this. I'll be speaking with Anne in terms of determining um, the next steps forward. Um, but imagine we'll come back um, to be able to come back with the bylaw or some recommendations. Um, Board amending bylaw, and as well, we can come back with the draft licensing bylaw um, at that time. So I'm thinking probably potentially later in August, but I'll coordinate that with so, you. Yeah. Sarah, would there be a municipality or a town that suits our layout better? Like we don't prepare an Espanol really. You know what I mean? Espanol is more built up 5,500 uh, population city. Would there be anything we can compare to that's out there now that's already got this in place? Yes, yeah, so there are a number of municipalities, like I said, I have a list of, of them, so I can look and kind of find one similar. But I would say that um, for the town of Espanola, too, it was just for um, vacant lots in the rural area. So it's, it is similar kind of well, in that regard, that that would, would, is what was being uh, proposed. Yeah. Any other council or any comment here? Paper is up, the public meeting is now officially closed, and the council meeting is being made. ZBA 
22-03, Salter Township, Section 13, Parcel 27908, Part 1, Plan 53R10041, located at 361 Burst Lake Road. Where sufficient information has been made available for the public to understand generally the proposal being considered, be resolved that due consideration to the proposed bylaw has been given, and Council hereby concludes that this application shall be approved effective of the public submissions. Can I have a moment for a second? Need to hear? Tinder? Any comment? Any Council or Dr. Terra? We didn't define temporary. We don't. All in favor? Recorded vote. Recorded vote. Kevin? E? Council is satisfied that the notes were given in accordance with the Planning Act respecting zoning bylaw amendments file number ZDA 22-04. Be it resolved that after due consideration, Council hereby concludes that no further notice be given with respect to the proposed amendments of the Township St. Francis Rivers zoning bylaw as it relates to resource, recreation, and rural zones. Effect the public submissions. Will there be another public meeting once you get a little more information? Well, all, me all meetings are open to the public. I mean, and the agenda is posted. I think for the purposes of this, we've satisfied the requirements of the Planning Act. Uh, I don't know that we need to do another formal, but uh, people are always welcome to um, submit concerns or comments at any time. So no new meeting, no other meetings? Well, yes. yeah. there will be other meetings, yeah. but I mean, yeah. like, there's yeah. not going to be notice of the public meeting as it was. It'll just yeah. be our regular notice of any um, 
uh, on the regular agenda if, it, uh, if it's going to be addressed again. Yeah. Yeah. And the agenda is posted on yes. the website. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you want to speak to it, you can get put it on in the delegation to the agenda. What was that, sorry? If you want to speak to this matter, you can call the office, send a note in, and say you would like to be a delegation on the agenda. Okay, mine's Over in Over that already. matter. Yeah. yeah. I believe mine's in already. But I meant in the yeah. future. Oh, okay. If you want to come to a future council meeting and speak on the subject, then you have to inform the office that you're going to be there and speak. To be put on the uh, agenda. Right. Yeah. As a delegation. By Friday. Yes. By, By Friday. Friday. Of the, the Friday of the Friday. week before. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to let you know a lot. Like, it's the second and fourth Friday of every month. And, like, if Diane goes on and you can check the website, it's posted clearly the agenda. So if you ever see anything that you're interested in, you want to see it. And if you can't get your internet working, you know, where you can find me, I can print it off for you. Um, and then if you want to come for something specific, that's when you contact Anne and let her know, oh, I, I will be coming, I'd like to talk about what's on your agenda. Yeah. But it, it's up there so that you can see what's coming up next. And you can always be a step ahead. Perfect. Yeah. And, and you can always call the office anytime and just ask. If yep. it's coming up, if it's going to be on the agenda, and we can give you that information ahead of time. Sure, thank you. If, in regards to your planning application is being approved, you can go forward to it. Yeah, I'll send you a letter uh, with all the steps that have to happen. There is a 20 day appeal period um, that you have to kind of wait for, but then uh, I'll be in touch with you uh, tomorrow to give you next steps. Okay. That's perfect. I just wanted to go up with Sarah and Anne. Is Council going to be part of developing that? Like, I think or where are we going to be involved with this? I think Sarah will do yeah. another draft yeah. that yeah. we will talk and then we'll hash out some stuff and then it'll yeah, come to Council. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Well, they should have placed the We'll get all the junk out of it and then let you put the icing on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda. Okay. Uh, next item was the location of council chambers. Go back to the council chambers. So I do have a motion to share. Like the recreational trailers, 
you know, on a regular basis where you might have one or two people in, in the uh, on the gallery. So I think so because we are going to discuss trailers and licensing again. I had yes. originally put August, but maybe we should uh, September. September. Yes. So put change to so we can just take one then and leave it to see what happens in August, please.
dispute resolved the approval of donation of non-$1,000 to the Massey Approach Society as a platinum sponsor of the Massey Fair. Kevin, you have any other bail? small amounts. 
you know, over the years. So there's only so much time from when they're incurred that they can be added to the tax roll. And this is when the treasurer has to do this in order to capture, I think the oldest ones are back to 2017. So the very minimal amounts. Now the, the amount that you saw on that schedule, that is not what the people are paying. That's the total. So some of these costs are municipal. Some of them will be covered by um, agriculture or macro um, as part of the grants process. So I think she did the a small one is yeah. for beavers? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, beaver dam removal and that. So it's some of that is for road purposes, so it's not levied um, against the taxpayer. So I think and this also includes our portion. Yes, that whole that forty seven thousand is yeah. is everything. I'm just curious what the Harold Green is gonna come up to after our township share. I just wonder what green here you have added to it because we're almost fifty thousand dollars there with this Harold Green. That is that's not um, that is mostly I think our cost. It's too cool. So of the whole, uh, all of the harrow, there's one salt here. This is, the net effect, $12,000 is what's going, I think it's going to the net. $12,000, 12720 is being charged to ratepayers out of that 47000 How many ratepayers are you talking oh, Sorry, sorry, my mistake. She had 6,577, 12 is the from the rate payers. 9,413 is from Omafra. Uh, 31,000 is coming from, uh, 31,000 plus another 400 is to do with roads and culverts to make up the 47,000. You say those numbers one more time? Yeah. Rate payers, yeah. 6,577. Omafra is 9,413. And um, 31, 6, 31,600 roughly is uh, coming from roads, uh, etc. And that's uh, one of the roads. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many rate years we're going to be sharing that 65 uh, This list. So, so right. it's spread out over all those people. Are those all separate people or are those yeah. just separate people? Uh, they're separate roll numbers. So you may have multiple people, but I mean, they're all assessed separately. They're, they're just, just all far from each other. I mean, some of them are $8, some of them, I mean, the highest one here is $1,500. So the rest are, are under. And they would have all received notice last year that this, they will get this this year, that it'll be on their final tax bill. Yes. And the Arrow Dream at this point in time, has our engineer come forward and given us any indication on what the problem is or what still exists out there? I haven't spoken with him. I know that Ruth has had a couple of conversations, but I'm not sure where it ended up. We work for his audience. Nothing? I'm not receiving I know that they were all meeting John and John Murray and John Moon were all meeting maybe a month ago or so. Uh, but I haven't heard the results of that. Maybe, maybe we can have a report for the next meeting. Um, I'll try, but I did not hear that. Last night I heard it was a word he was sick. Oh, yeah, John Lilly was sick. Yeah. And then we talked to him after that, and it was after that that he was supposed to go okay. and meet with him. And, and they did talk, he and John and Mooney did talk, um, but I don't know what the result of that. I mean, certainly we did have a report. Yeah. Okay, it is all the bylaw 2022 32 the cost for maintenance of the carriers of the municipal drain the first second half. 
getting there and uh, getting on the trailer. Being resolved by law 2022 2 being by law to collect costs for maintenance and repairs and use of the green if you read it here. Third, the final time to pass an open house. Oh, I just can't get off. Is there anything else you can do? Nope. Okay. 
speech is held at 10 7:49 p.m. and this meeting will be adjourned on the next meeting of the chair. Dale, Monica, Kevin, Sandy, all day. Here.